Hello everybody, welcome to another Hands On with me, Chris Chinchilla, where every week on a Monday afternoon, European time, typically, I take a look at a piece of uh, cool technology that has interested me, usually developer focused, and see how far I can get. If you're watching live, say hello in the chat. If you're watching the edited version that usually comes out about a week later, say hello in the chat too. I just won't see it straight away, obviously. Uh, if you enjoy what you see, you can find much more at kristenschiller.com, along with my other podcasts and videos, etc., etc., and also my uh, written word as well. And wherever you're watching, just as I said, leave a comment, subscribe, say hello, etc., etc. Today, I'm going to look at code edit, um, and you can find more at github.com slash uh, code edit app. That's the organization trying to fit the whole URL in was just taking up too much space. And um, what is it? Well, it's, as the name might imply, a code editor. Um, but it's a little different or maybe not so different. I don't know. We'll see. It's um, macOS native. It aims to, well, I've never um, hidden the fact that I'm a big fan of Visual Studio Code but it is not Mac OS native per se. It's um, an Electron application. I generally don't like Electron applications, but Microsoft and the team around VS Code have done a very good job on optimizing it actually. Um, and then there's things like Sublime, which is also cross-platform. There's BB Edit, which is Mac OS native, but a little traditional in the way it's built maybe. You know, there's a lot of options. Obviously, another option if you want to get the best performance ever is something like Emacs or Vim as well. But um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a modern uh, code editor, text editor user. I sort of like this more modern world. And I came across code edit. I'm not quite sure where, uh, to be honest with you. It it aims to, well, actually, I, I found this somewhere. I have to find it now. Let's, uh, let's cut to a screen share anyway, and I'll show you. Anyone who's ever used Xcode might think this logo looks sort of familiar, which is kind of the point. And somewhere, I can't seem to see it. Uh, yeah, here we go. Text edit plus Xcode equals code edit. So they're sort of going for the text editing simplicity of text edit, the sum complexity of Xcode and coming up with this logo here. Um, it's early days, as you can see, there are no downloads even yet. And there's a lot of features that are not realized yet. So it's a little early days to be going through this, but I still wanted to, I still thought it'd be interesting. There is a discord server here. I actually reached out to the discord community to find out what might be on the roadmap, because there's definitely going to be a few gaps in functionality as we go through. You do have to actually check this out and build it. I have already tried that because that is a step that could have been quite arduous, but um, I do probably need to run an update. Yeah, eight hours ago was the last commit, so I do need to run an update. So some local changes here. I'll come back to this in a minute, actually. Um, I did discover uh, a problem and then an issue that resolved that problem, but I would kind of like to zap all this and see if the problem I found, and some others did as well, has been solved. So let's just pull from, pull from main. And now we actually need to open it in Xcode. It does say it uh, in the contributing doc. So fork and clone, I'm not gonna worry getting a, a fork right now because I'm not really gonna contribute anything. You need to have at least a Monterey, which I, and I have Big Sur. <laughs> uh, and now we need to open the code edit workspace. I, I'm not that familiar with uh, Xcode projects and Objective-C and Swift, to be honest with you. Uh, so I'm always a little unclear about um, what the difference between those is. I know whenever I've done uh, Co uh, Cocoa Pods, for example, it asks you to use that one instead. I'm not 100% sure what the difference is, but um, that's not for this episode to discuss. Let's find it. There it is. Uh, and then that file there. So this will open up in Xcode. This might take a little bit of time to rebuild, but I don't think things will have changed that much, hopefully. We'll see. And it wasn't that slow. And actually, it's an interesting to sort of go through the process, really, anyway. But let's see if that bug that I had last time is still there. So this is now loading. So we can see it's pulling down these various dependencies here. This is interesting because I didn't get all these issues last time. Well, these are all just to-dos. 
Swift Lint. I haven't installed. I don't remember seeing that before, but it's just a warning, so should be okay. Uh, let's jump into. We can see here the various dependencies, a whole bunch of things. They're not all particularly familiar with me to me, uh, and then their actual project up here. This also shows you some of the the way they've implemented some of the features that uh, macOS offers, like the open with. Uh, right context click and stuff like that and maybe some other things in here I don't know but I guess this is the main application itself so this looks like it has already built so I think the error I had last time is now gone which just involved I was getting some errors about um, kind of package dependencies I guess and I fixed it by packages and then update to latest versions Let's not do that first. Let's see if we do or don't need that. So let me just hit run here. It's only for Mac. You can see the target was, was set here. Building. So we may get that error now. We'll see. I wonder if you could also build this for iPad. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> That's a world I don't know too much about, but that could be an interesting experiment. So now the build has succeeded. Attaching, it should be launching down here. You can see it is. So obviously I don't need to do that fix anymore. And there we go. So any of you who've ever used Xcode um, will recognize this screen looks pretty familiar. I, I don't know if the project is gonna have any issues with that. I don't know. It looks so similar to Xcode. I sort of worry if there might be a copyright issue there, but I don't know, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Let's quickly go through the preferences. I always like to look at preferences first. And we can see a bunch of preferences here. This again looks very much like Xcode. Appearance, system, light or dark, I like that. Uh, color or monochrome icons, I don't know where those show. Tabs, Xcode or native, I think I will go with native. Welcome screen, navigator size, let's go for large, so for the, for the sake of the video. Um, Yep, some other things we can have a shell command as well. I might leave that for now. Well, actually, why not? Let's install it. Okay, that should be done. We can test that in a second. Accounts, so this is just version control accounts. Uh, the usual ones you'd expect. I might add GitHub, although I did actually find a lot of troubles with adding GitHub with Xcode. I mean, obviously this is not the same application. Um, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, this is all very, very similar to Xcode. Whether Xcode provides this stuff that other applications can implement, maybe, or maybe they're just doing a lot of uh, inspiration. I'm not completely sure. Accounts, this was, this is, doesn't seem to quite be working. We'll keep it on HTTPS for now. Behaviors yet to be implemented. Navigation yet to be implemented. Themes, you can change a few things here. I changed it to GitHub just for, I don't know why, I'm more familiar maybe. Text edit, I increased the font size a little bit. This all uses macOS standard uh, SDKs and APIs. Terminal settings, key bindings yet to come. Source control, I changed some of the settings here. Components yet to come. Locations, in case I suppose you want to share these. Uh, and advanced yet to come. And once you get to the application window itself, um, this looks fairly familiar if you've ever used Xcode. And some of the menus up here are all fairly similar for um, any macOS application, to be honest with you. Source control window. I think more will happen once we get to actually opening something. I'm assuming help. Yeah, probably not there yet. That actually would be something I'd be interested in contributing. I've never built like help for a Mac application. That could be interesting. First, here is my tried and tested website. Um, I've used this before. I think this gets rid of that. Yeah, this adds that. I, I don't know. Okay, that gives us an overview. I increased the UI size, but it's still quite small. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So we get a little bit of uh, formatting here. I don't see any way to set the uh, file format. Like, what is it? Oh, here we go, type, we can. It doesn't do it automatically. That will probably come later. So this is 
oh, this is a weird file. This is HTML with liquid in it. I doubt that's supported, to be honest with you. This is also intriguing. I guess they're just picking up kind of a default list of file types here, maybe. Odd sort of options here that you don't probably use outside of native development. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll pick HTML for now. That's sort of close enough. It's not really changed very much. <laughs> Uh, location, text encoding, I mean, this is all as we'd expect. I don't know if there's going to be any kind of autocomplete. I mean, this is also not really proper HTML, but no, there doesn't seem to be any kind of autocomplete yet. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot kind of yet to be created. So fairly bare bones, if you forgive the pun to BB edit at the moment, but we have the basics there. What else we've got over here? This is a Git a history. This is help for, but it's not gonna be anything there yet, I guess. If we right click here, we get show in finder, open in tab, uh, duplicate, source control. I wonder if we make a change, if we, yeah, source control, not sure if that's, not working or I don't know. Let's see. Source control. It probably looks like that's not working or it could be that because my um, setup isn't working yet. I'm not sure. Let's maybe try uh, something different. Let's try some markdown. So this is markdown. Hasn't auto detected it. So we'll change that to markdown. Didn't really change very much, but um, Anyway, uh, again, I guess we're going to have very little. I wonder if we'll get spelling error detection because macOS can provide that by default. Seemingly not. What else do we have here? Version control. Actually, so there are changes here. Repository isn't here, but the changes are there. I don't think we can commit anything, though. No, seemingly not. Just seeing changes. Here we have search and replace. So something's happening beach ball of doom i do have a lot of files though now this is an interesting opportunity to see is it threaded in some way though because i have two no so it's quit it's crashed the whole application unfortunately that's the advantage of running it from xcode <laughs> okay let's start that up again kind of weird if you can sort of live edit your running application that you're using to edit other applications all that gets a bit inception like Let's open this JavaScript project instead, just for. So here's some JavaScript. I don't know if this has picked this up or not. I don't think so. Yeah, it just treats everything as Swift, basically, to begin with. Dare I tempt fate with search again? Search seems to break things, so <laughs> let's not tempt that. Let's not do that again. What else do we have? This, I think, is the uh, extensions or components. I'm not actually sure, but there's nothing there right now. This. It's also not quite there yet, whatever that may be. I think the guess this is errors. Yeah, there's a lot not quite here yet. So most of this left navigation bar does not really exist yet. So I guess this also means we can't really build anything quite yet. All pretty minimal right now. There's not a tremendous amount we can do, but the project is, well, how old? Um, only 1200 commits, which is not so many. Quite a lot of people sort of looking at it, even on Open Collective already, which is, interesting actually uh, they do seem to actually have some people backing it um, which is interesting um, what they do mention as coming soon currently working on the extensions API which is very fundamental be interesting to see what they do with that so it's kind of Mac native esque but I guess this is the components easy to create extensions like for example with uh, Raycast where it's a Mac native application but you can create extensions in JavaScript sort of interesting bridging they're looking at command palette which I didn't even think to try that's no, printing I just use the usual keyboard shortcut um, that is in a lot of other tools I don't see it anywhere yet yeah there we go no it doesn't exist yet so command palette keyboard shortcuts I suppose custom keyboard shortcuts, I can probably do command S and stuff like that, maybe. I would assume you get those for free. <laughs> Split editor layout, okay, that makes sense, although that, I oh know, there's the button, but uh, 
I guess you can get a lot of these things built into SwiftUI or whatever they're using for the interface, but they have to actually be click, you know, hooked up to something. Oh, I have a terminal oh, yeah. and a debugger, but I can't actually run anything yet. So that <laughs> is so useful. You could argue here this is very, very early days, um, not massively useful right now, but uh, the project is moving quite quickly. The Discord server is reasonably active. They did actually say to me they're looking for contributors. So if this is something that interests you, uh, and you can actually see even here, 16 contributors already, 110 people on Discord, which is for a kind of, you know, a, a reasonably niche tool is not so bad. If this intrigues you, and I might actually have a look at how to create that help, that's something I'd be interested in learning, to be honest with you. There's um, a lot of work you can help with, a lot of things you can help with, uh, and you can see the contributing guide here and some of the people already working on it. So uh, it looks like um, some fairly well-known projects here, companies even there, um, helping out. So yeah, quite a lot of interest, I think. Um, there isn't really such a thing, to be honest with you. A modern code editor for macOS native. Um, so interesting to see what they end up doing. And we can see maybe what some people are uh, look, going into here. Oh, maybe this is probably <laughs> what I experienced. Also a lot of issues. A lot to come. I mean, you start to think about it, there's a lot of features you need in a text editor. It seems simple, but you know, this is why a lot of the current text editors are successful. It's that extension marketplace and you can start to add all sorts of things. And that will be interesting to see what they do with that, I guess. In summary, CodeEdit, a interesting looking uh, Mac native Code editor, a lot of work to do yet, but an interesting project already has quite a lot of interest. Uh, I, they, pro the community are very encouraging to get people involved. Jump over to the GitHub organization. You can see at the bottom of the screen. I, still, I feel like the past few weeks I've done uh, projects that were all like check back in six months <laughs> and see how things are. But this is an open source project, fully open source project that claims it will always be free. So I think in this case, you know, the more effort people put in, the more that will happen in those six months. And you can see what's happening in the open. So, yeah. Looks encouraging. Not there yet, but I will definitely keep an eye on it and see what I can contribute. I don't know much Swift, really, but it's an excuse to learn. I like code editors, so it's an excuse to learn. So um, check it out and keep an eye on it, really, I think is the summary there. If you like this video, you can find more at kristenschiller.com or wherever you're watching this at the moment, live or edited and later. Subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw, leave a comment if you enjoyed what you saw, or let me know if you end up using CodeEdit yourself. Um, that's always good to hear, to be honest with you. Uh, what were your experiences with using it? I will be back next Monday with another live stream. I haven't quite decided what the topic will be yet. I'm not sure, I've got a few things to look at and possibly in a new setup, although you won't actually be able to tell, maybe. There'll be one thing you'll be able to tell the difference, but everything else will remain somewhat the same. But I will be using a different setup at a different camera, so actually that will look quite different. So that's exciting. I'll probably have a whole new plethora of technical problems, but um, I look forward to bringing that upgraded quality to you for the next episode. I have been Christian Schiller. This has been Code Edit, a Mac OS native code editor. And until next time, thank you very much for joining me.